Mayor's novice hurdle on the Thursday, a race that I can't really get too excited about. Typically, long gone are the days where you would just back a Willie Mullins trained mayor starting with the letter L. However, it has turned into a pretty tasty race. This year looks like an absolute vintage renewal. Dysart Enos and Brighter Days Ahead have been sort of at the head of the market right from the start of the season, and they have both done nothing other than enhance their claims as the season's gone on. I have massive niggling doubts about both of them in the back of my head that there is something better. I don't feel like I see real star quality with these horses, but then you go all the way back to horses that have won it in the past, and sometimes they've gone off at prices that would also suggest that maybe they hadn't shown that much yet. I'm a bit harsh with these ones, right? They are novices at the end of the day. And I don't want to be rude about the sex stuff, but they are girls as well. So the opportunities that they might run in is harder for them, I would imagine, to be impressive. You get the boys running in their typical grade ones, the nice trials for these types of races, which are obvious. Whereas the depth in the mayor's field, there's only so much they can go up against. So Dysart Enos, to be fair to, to Fergal O'Brien, ran her against the boys the last day, ran her at Cheltenham, which I thought he'd been avoiding for a little while, but it wasn't by design. It's just by the programme. And she was pretty impressive, to be fair. So she deserves to be where she's in the market, but she's never been a price that has tempted me to want to bet her. The one that I've always been keen on, and I don't think we're ever going to see her, was Junta Marvel. I'm still clinging on to the slim glimmer of hope that she may race at some point. I think she's an absolute aeroplane. We probably won't see her. So as far as it comes to the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, I will just wait until the day, and I'll probably just stick some bets into some sort of multiples or things like that. So... Either of you gentlemen want to take the uh, take to the four with a strong opinion? Paul, have you got a strong opinion? Jamie, you got a strong opinion? Paul has. Paul's nodding. Paul, you're yeah, in. I have. I yeah, I, I, I have. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I wonder if we're... Oh, my God. That win may have ended up in the same place. There's been a lot of real serious noise about brighter days ahead out of uh, uh, Elliot's stable. Um, and I'd have her ahead yeah. of Dysart <laughs> Enos. I think Dysart Enos is, is decent in her own right. Um, and you know, up until Christmas, I was kind of thinking, you know, it's just it's a race where I'm just going to do the forecast. But then along came Jay de Grugy, who I just think yeah. is a serious, serious horse. So I look at you know what Dysart Enos, Enos and Brighter Days had done, and you look at that in the context of previous mares hurdles, and you think, you know, they're good, they're good, and they're going to go on to have really good careers. You know, probably looking at, you know, one of them winning the Mayor's Chase uh, in a couple of years' time, you know, on the way through winning the Mayor's Hurdle. And then along comes Jay de Grugy, just puts in an absolute bloody monster of a performance on debut. You yeah. know, she basically put a performance in that was better than Bright Brighter Days Ahead when Brighter Days Ahead had, had a run. And you just think, whoa, where did that come from? And I know there was some talk about her. You know, I know there was a bit of noise about her and they, they thought she was smart, but I, I suspect they weren't quite expecting that. So all of a sudden you've got, you know, Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy rubbing the hands thinking, you know, that's one for us against Mullins. That ain't one for them against Mullins. J.D. Grugy wins this race. That was a serious, serious performance. Um, a couple of other things to note. Gavin Cromwell, I think it's really unfortunate. Only by night in any other season would be talked about as a, a horse with a chance. It's got no chance of finishing in the first three now. Mm -hmm. um, Tiger Bay Queen is, uh, has been a talking horse. It's one of JP's that's with uh, Peter Fahey. Hasn't been out. She had a small niggle, um, so they've had to hold on to her. Um, so I don't think she'll come here now. And if they've got any sense, I was just looking at that and just thinking... You know, hopefully I was thinking like the trainer and the owner would do. I think she should go to the champion hurdle. She can still run in the champion hurdle. And we've got a real heap of average bumper horses right now. I think with her seven pound claim, she'd be really interested if they sent her to that race. Don't know if they're talking that way. I've actually um, spoken to a contact of mine uh, that has horses at Peter Farr. He, he doesn't know, but I think he's going to mention it. Um, but I think Jade de Grouge is just one serious horse. I mean, I like it. So key things to mention here. We've not been doing it so much since we got further through the video, probably after a few more Guinnesses. 10 to 1 top price, Bet365. So you do have the luxury of a cash out. It will be about 95% though. Betfair Paddy Power will give you 100% cash out there. 8 to 1 top price, but non-runner money back William Hill. 
eight to one. And on the exchange, she's 8.4 and she's 10.5 to lay. So with all things said in there, I mean, the 10 to one's fine because it's the race you're going to go to. But the eight to one non-runner money back, if you're trying to be sensible or you're looking for bets to stick in there, sounds like while you pop down to William Hill to have your bollocks on Hermes Allen for the Turners, you might as well stick some money on Jay DeGruji as well. I've had a couple of people mention that as well, to be fair, Paul. Actually, I say a couple. You're one of them. And a very esteemed, very good judge of mine has also said the same. We started to talk about the race and just said, I don't even know why you're having to ask me. Did you not watch Jay DeGruji run at Christmas? I just did a little... Just did a little lull reply and said, are you serious? And he said, honestly, if you don't go back and watch that race and you ask me another question about the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, don't ever speak to me again. And she was a, she was an aeroplane, wasn't she? So fair enough. Jamie, was that was that the one that you wanted to mention or do you want to take Paul on? Um, oh, he's not keen. He's not keen. I'm not keen, though. No. Uh, I think she's a three-mile bog warrior, in my opinion. Uh, she was getting better. The further she was going in the ground, uh, and the ground was pretty bad that day. She doesn't jump well enough for me either, and that's just my opinion. And it, look, she'll obviously jump way better now than after I say that the next time she runs. I presume she's probably going to Fairy House next, and uh, for that mayor's race that everyone goes for uh, before Chatham. And Is if she wins that, she'll have a pe- yeah, and she'll have a penalty. Uh, no. Is she big enough to carry the penalty? Of course she is. She's she's a strapping good mare. Uh, and obviously, and I agree with Paul, she's definitely one for a mare's chase down the line. Uh, 100%. I uh, wouldn't disagree there. Uh, I'd just be worried about it was a slowly run. You know, he beat a horse of Tommy Cooper, the local trainer here, uh, where I'm from. Butcher Hollow. Uh, Butcher Hollow being the same sentence of any other horse. No offence to him, probably not. Uh, if, if the form is good, then... Uh, in a line with Butcher Hollow, there's a horse that I mentioned there uh, that beat Butcher Hollow at Nav, and it's Jigger Road, is a horse that I definitely follow back in next road, anyway. Uh, no, I was impressed with her, but back in her in a in a two mile one coming back in trip on better ground, I wouldn't touch her, no. I think she could be next year's horse. And that's Who just wins my opinion. It? Ty Sardino. I mean, to be like, you um, do like her. I like Dicer, I've told you earlier, I like Dicer, and the, the way it's gone around the track and the way it ran up the hill. Uh, my only problem with Dicer, Dave, and um, is the niggling doubt in my head that she's awkward, she's a bit buzzy, and she could throw away her chance at the start of the race. Do you know what I mean? She did handle the stuff at Cheltenham quite well, didn't she? And yeah. again, I don't want to be... This is, I don't this be, is the I best below. Be, this is the first I know, I know. but she was fine at Aintree, wasn't she? And Aintree had I, technically just as big a crowd. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the one thing I will say with Dyson Enos, and I mean this with the greatest respect to him because he is a very good jockey, gold cup winning jockey. Paddy Brennan, when he won at Cheltenham on Dyson Enos, there was multiple accounts that tweeted Dyson Enos was really impressive, especially because Paddy Brennan lost his irons on the run in. No, that's mm. just how he rides a horse. And mm. that's what worries me a little bit. It's Paddy Brennan in a finish with his one-dimensional riding. <laughs> it's a bit, It's always a big field, the Mayor's Novice, right? That I'm that worries me a little bit with her. Maybe. She's good. She's got an engine, isn't she? I, I agree with you. I'm kind of sick like you. I really wanted, and I thought she's a really good horse in John Tamara. Was wrong, but there's no sign of her. Uh, very annoying. But uh, uh, look, there's the form line then with Chitara. Now, Chitara is running an open mare's hurdle over two and a half miles, but it was heavy ground. And Junta Marvin now is an official rate, uh, sorry, Jatara has an, uh, an official rate now of 142. And that was beaten six lengths I have in my head by Brighter Days. Ahead. No, it clouded the second hurdle at down right. I had no chance after that. Uh, it was six to one to beat Brighter Days. I had that day down right in that mare's race. Uh, but to me at the moment, it's in my head exactly what Paul said before he went on to achieve the cruise. But that I was going to back the forecast, and I'm still going to back the forecast because I think it's between the two of them. Dice Sardine asked for Brighter Days Ahead. Well, the and it's just thing the is, you do, the, you do the combination trifecta at uh, Cheltenham. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there's no one's going to get near the three, 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 three of them. them. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, um, I mean, it's I will a, almost it, certainly no. do that, by the way. It, it, it is yeah. a good race and it's a good it, renewal as well. But there is, there is, there's always a bit of depth in the market. I would just hasten to just add yeah. that, yes, there could be injuries yeah. in all sorts. But like the prices that Dice yeah. are eating with brighter days ahead are, 
Mm. Then they're going to be that prize or bigger on the day. I do feel like the only potential obvious shortener is Jay DeGruji at the tens, but it's probably easy to say because we can see that it's a general eight spoke. It's hard at this point. It's hard at this point because we're, we're, we're looking at it now. We'll look at it again when it comes to March, won't we? I don't think opinions will change too much, but the market might a little bit. It's not. It, it's never a race to get balls deep stuck into for any of us, though. Surely. Why isn't it? It's a great race. I, I, I disagree, actually. Think, you yeah, two are nuts. Right. It's women. It's novice <laughs> women. I've made you've got, you've, only got three, race. you've got three serious contenders for the race. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, it's a serious race. race. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to have to get some yeah, multiples on then. I, I will, well, that's, I will that's, say that's, that's one, 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 more, one more point before I, I, I leave the race. Or we come yeah, back to it. Well. Um, my only other problem with Dice Arninas, I know it won the last day of Chantham and it was two, the same course and distance. My one little slight worry about her, if they go really, really fast, and that could happen in this race, that she is a speed horse at the end of the day, they'll run the sting out of her. And that would suit brighter days ahead more. And that's my like, final opinion. Go on, Paul, let you wrap it up. Well, I've, I've got... I, I, I actually keep my own ratings, as you guys know. So mm. I've I've got um, brighter days ahead at 138. Mm -hmm. I've got Jay de Gruzzi at 136. And I've got Dysart Eno at 131. That makes... Uh, and, and, but the the difference the, the difference there is the um with um Jade Grugy, that's on debut for her the other two are on second runs i have her she was ahead on first runs clear clear, clear ahead of the other two on, on a first run but even if you take that first run at 136 and you take brighter days ahead at 138 add 7 pounds mayor allowance both of them could win the supreme yep Mm -hmm. And that's got to be a genuine concern this year, surely. Yeah. Now, I know trainers are or appear to have got reluctant again to run in the Supreme. Willie, the way that Willie? Super, that Supreme is uh, working out at the moment, we've got um, uh, Jericho de Rapone, who's probably some, I think I've got him 135. Ouch. You're a hard man to please, Paul. But well, but I can see that's a one three five P clearly because you've got yeah, with a loads of improvement to come. You can see where the improvement comes for him. Who else have we got? Um, I, I had it's for me highest at one forty. I think Probably RPR not. is one forty one for him. Probably gone now, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't think he's at all. Otherwise. Otherwise. Um, what else have we got? I don't think there's anything else close at the moment. I mean, this I this is a very this is a clear. very true case. Mm. Those two mares are and clear. I, and I, and one, I if think one, I, one of those players took the brave decision to go to the Super mm. they now. could be rewarded. I think they win. And I think Dice Hardinas as well, Paul, will be suited to the new to the old track big time. Well, I've, I've got a one three three minute. I've got a one three one, which would effectively be the equivalent of one three eight. And I don't think there's anything higher than 138 with the Geldings. I think the highest might be 138. I haven't got my ratings in front of me. So well, that is an interesting look. angle with it. And we, we did talk about the price in there as well. Like I said with Jada Gruzzi, like you can get the 10 to 1 about it. And you know what I said about being stubborn and all those types of bit, like potentially getting greedy or whatever. That's not to say that just because Paul's quickly mentioned that it's definitely going to happen. But it, it they're all possibilities. And to take all of that shit out of your head, if you look at the price and think this is an 8 to 1 poke, it's probably going to be short on the day. Yes, you might be able to get 10 to 1 somewhere else with the wrists attached. You probably could think about the non-money -money back. The last line I'll say on it, which I, it's painful because it's just a dig at Dysart Enos, the mayor's novice that she, when she beat that parking fine, parking fine, and with Stuart Parking, Gretchen Parking, he put that out on Twitter to get the horse named, right? as like a little raffly thing. And I, I suggested the name parking fine to him in a message. He gave oh. me zero credit for it. But I messaged him and said, "Oh, is it going to be quite good?" And he said, "It's one." He said, "It's probably one of the worst ones I've bred." I'll probably get a load of shit for saying this. They say he never said it, but it is what it is. <laughs> and 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 that was travelling with Dyson in us the last. That park and find ran the other day, and it was odds on. I think it was odds on, or it was short, and it got absolutely walloped by something else. So. Dice Innes is very much the British type horse, like a Jericho de Repede, can only beat what it's run against. It's only so good it can look. But I would always be a little bit worried about that form. But this is, again, this is the part of it. We have to factor this stuff in. Paul, you, you all know very much from like betting for a significant time. Jamie, you're the same as well. 
go back a decade and maybe when the like British film was a little bit stronger, or whatever, like the depth of it's a bit easier, but you do just have to adapt now that unfortunately you are just going to have very good horse horses running against shit. So you can't judge them based on the numbers that everyone else has got. You have to do your yeah, own right. ratings like Paul does, or you have to view it on other stuff. You, it, it is what it is. Like we, it, It's not an our fault. It's the same as Constitution Hill. We don't need other 170s horses to know that he's 170, but it's much yeah. easier to see when it's on the magnified stage. These other ones, Dyson Enos could be very good. Jericho de Repine could be very good. But there is a little bit that has to be taken on trust with both of those, I think. Anyway, we've talked too much about the mares.